My name is Andrew Camardella and I'm the maker in residence at Inventables. Today we'll be taking a look at the tabs feature in Easel. This feature allows you to create connection points between the parts you'd like to carve all the way through your sheet and the rest of your material. I made this quick example tile to show what tabs actually are. In this video, I'll show you step by step how to make this tile and use the tabs feature in Easel. In our example file, tabs can be found around the edges of any sheet that goes all the way through our material. Tabs are little pieces of leftover material that the bit skips over and avoids cutting. Tabs keep your part secure until the end of your carve when you can just cut the tabs and pop your parts out. If you make your tabs correctly, there's only a little bit of cleanup to get great looking parts and minimize the risk of them popping out or being damaged while you carve. All without complicated fixturing or clamping. For more complex examples that make use of this alongside other techniques, check out the project tutorials on the YouTube channel. Let's get working on the file. The first thing I like to do when I start working in an easel file is to rename it. It helps find it in the file structure a little bit later on. So wait, what's an oiloid anyway? It's actually two circles that are perpendicular to each other whose centers lie on each other's circle. And the interesting thing is that when you roll it, it goes in a straight line. So in this video, we're going to make a bunch of circles that interlock with each other. So let's get back to making the shapes in easel. The next thing I'm going to do is actually change the dimensions so that the material that easel is showing us matches the material that we're going to be using. We can now start building our geometry. So I'm going to import a circle that's our stock two inch circle. And I'm going to just change it to outlines so that we cut around it. The next thing I'm going to do is actually change the dimension of this circle. The way to do that is by locking the proportions of the circle itself. And then I'm going to type into the width box and that way the height will update automatically. I'm going to bring in another circle now and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to change the circle to outlines and I'm going to make a copy of this one because I want to make another version of it. So I'm just going to copy and paste by control C control V and then in this new circle I'm going to lock the proportions again and I'm going to make this one smaller. So now I have three different sizes of circles. The next step here is to actually make these circles connect together. And one of the options is to use the interlocker tool, but I want to be a little bit more specific about it. So here I brought in a square, and I'm actually just going to make it uh, quite a bit shorter, and I'm going to make it the thickness of the material that I'm using. And that way the pieces will actually lock together. One of the things I realized is that in order to attach this slot that I'm making to the parts that I have is I need to combine them, which means that I'm going to get a solid fill anyway, and it's also a little bit easier to visualize this way. So at this point, I make all the circles solid, and I'm just going to copy this slot to all of the different circles. As I was working, I realized that the slots that I was making would allow the circles to fit together perfectly, and they wouldn't be offset and create the oloid shape that I was actually looking for. So here, I'm just going to undo, hitting Control-Z, and I'm going to remove the slots. And I'm going to go back and make this original slot a little bit shorter. It's only going to go part of the way through the circle, so that way the centers of the circles, when they slot together, will be offset, and I get that oloid shape I was looking for. So I'm going to take that slot and now copy and paste it on all the circles. Once I have all the parts copied, it's now time to combine the slot with the circle. So I'm going to select the shape and the slot, and I'm going to click the Combine button. I now have one shape, so I know that my combine between the circle and the slot actually worked. And here I'm just going to change the circle fill to be an outline. And the reason for that is I actually want to preview and see that my bit is actually going to fit inside the slot. 
So here I have selected a 0.125 inch bit and I have a 0.125 inch slot. So normally we don't like to put a bit that's inside of a slot that's exactly the same size. So I'm just going to step back down to a 16th of an inch bit. From there I'm going to go through and actually combine all of the slots with the circles to make single parts. The final step here is to take all of the shapes that have fills and turn them back into outside outlines so that way they're ready to cut. I'm now going to take my two inch circle and I'm going to duplicate that because I wanted a second copy of it. I didn't do this earlier so that way I could avoid having to make the slot and combine for this circle as well. The next steps here are to actually just prepare for cutting and so I'm going to make sure that the cut depth is all the way through the sheet of material and I'm going to go through now and adjust the tabs so you'll see that I have these yellow dots that go around the edges of all of these shapes and this essentially symbolizes where a tab is going to be left so in this case the bit is actually going to skip over the material and only cut partially through the sheet and this is going to prevent the part from popping out as the shapes are being carved out of the sheet of material so a quick note about tabs. Tabs themselves only work on outlines. So you can pick any one of the outline shapes here and uh, the tabs will appear, but they'll only appear if you're cutting all the way through the material. So you're gonna wanna have your slider all the way to the bottom here and you get this tabs menu that pops up. There's a few options here of actually using tabs. First of all, you can ignore tabs altogether uh, by clicking the use tabs checkbox. Uh, and you can change a couple of parameters. So one of them is the length. So that's the length of the tab along the cut path. Uh, and so by making this number larger, the tab itself gets wider in the slot. So if I make this one inch, for example, it makes the tabs very large. The other thing that we can do is actually make the tab height different. So the height here is measured from the bottom of the cut. So the height's gonna depend on whether you have any grain or you have multiple layers as in plywood, or if your material is brittle or soft. Finally, we have the quantity. So the quantity here is just going to change the number of tabs in the slot. And here we can adjust this. I'm just going to have four here right now. And you also have the option of being able to move those tabs around. So sometimes you have some features that you'd rather not have tabs on, like a corner or you have a slot or something like that, and a tab will kind of end up in there. And so you have the ability to move them around by just clicking on the yellow dot and sliding it around. I'm now going to go through and just adjust the alignment of all of the circles. And this is just essentially selecting two circles at a time and then doing vertical or horizontal center alignments to get the shapes to actually match up. I'm now going to select all the shapes and just center them in the sheet of material I'm going to cut, making sure that my parts don't overlap with the red zone for the smart clamp of the carby. From here the only thing that's really left to do is to double check that my thicknesses are set correctly, that my tabs are in the right place, and then I can simulate. And here it says that it's going to take about seven minutes to do this file. And I notice that the material that I'm using is a little bit different, so I'm going to switch it to MDF and see that it's only going to take a few minutes from here. We're going to end up using cast acrylic in this project, so I'm going to come back and change this later on, but you won't see it in the preview. So we'll go through all the dialogues, make sure that everything is set up correctly and that our material is clamped in place, and we'll start carving. The video is sped up about 10 times here, and you'll notice that as we get down to like the second or third pass through our material, the spindle is actually going to do little hops over certain areas, and that's actually creating the tab. And you can see that here in the real-time speed video.
So we're going to vacuum off all the dust and you'll see that the parts that we actually cut out are still attached to the regular sheet of material. And I'm going to go through with some side cutters and just cut the tabs themselves. I try to make the tabs small enough that the side cutters will easily cut them off. I just go through and use the side cutters to trim the edges a little bit and then use some sandpaper to get a nice fit between all the pieces. And so here's our oiloid in action. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you want to get updates to this channel. Feel free to write comments below about projects or features you'd like to see videos on, as well as head over to the Inventables forum or website and check out other people's projects and show off your own.